Good morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor, Director Hertel. Uh, I'm going to speak briefly about um, some of the potential health impacts of benzene in particular uh, associated with benzene exposure. So benzene is a flammable and colorless uh, liquid. It has a sweet odor, and it's frequently used to make uh, many chemicals. It can actually be found in gasoline, uh, crude oil, tobacco smoke, actually, and it's used to make synthetic materials, lubricants, dyes, and detergents. So outdoor air actually generally contains low levels of benzene, again, from tobacco smoke. It can come from gas stations, uh, motor vehicle exhaust, and industrial emissions. Uh, indoor air generally contains levels of benzene that are higher than uh, those in outdoor air, and the benzene in indoor air can come from products that contain benzene such as glues, uh, paints, furn furniture wax, and detergents. So breathing in very high levels of benzene can actually cause people to feel symptoms within minutes to several hours of exposure, and those symptoms can include headaches, uh, you can feel dizzy, you can feel weak, uh, you can have a rapid heart rate, or you can feel very drowsy or sleepy. At very, very high levels, uh, exposure to benzene can cause death, but based on what we've seen uh, thus far in our response, we have not seen benzene levels in the homes tested at that level. So the main impact of long-term exposure to benzene, particularly uh, over a year I'm talking about now, is on the blood. So it can cause low blood cell counts or anemia, it can cause a weakened immune system, and it can cause blood cancer. Again, I'm talking about long-term exposure. So out of an abundance of caution, as has been mentioned today, MDHHS is currently recommending that people who are at risk, at risk of being exposed to six parts per billion or higher levels of benzene in the air evacuate while we do our due diligence and work with our partners to understand the risk of exposure more. That number specifically is based on studies that looked at potential health risk of exposure for two weeks to benzene in particular. So it's also important to note that benzene leaves the bloodstream very quickly after someone has been exposed. So a test for benzene can't actually tell you if you've been exposed for how long or what the potential health impacts of that exposure may be. So essentially there's not really a test. There's also no known uh, specific treatment for benzene exposure, and really the best thing is to remove someone from the exposure risk. So if someone is experiencing symptoms like headache, uh, rapid heart rate, dizziness, some of those things that I described, they should absolutely contact their medical provider to seek an evaluation. And to be clear, having these symptoms does not necessarily mean that you have been exposed to benzene. Some of those symptoms I described are, are very general and many things can cause them. However, if you are having these symptoms and you are concerned, you absolutely should seek evaluation by a medical provider. So as has been mentioned, this is a continually evolving situation. As our partners and as MDHHS learns more, we will absolutely be certain to update the public about uh, what we know and, and what you all should do to protect yourselves. Our primary concern, our main goal here is to protect the people of Flat Rock and to do our due diligence from a public health and, and technical perspective to protect all of you. Uh, so thank you. Um, with that, I think I'll turn it back over to Laura.